Story 1 When people think of bear attacks, the first thing in mind is that it's done by a grizzly or polar bear, since they are by far the most aggressive out of all bears. However, that doesn't make other bear species less dangerous, and today's case is the gruesome attack of an unusual yet very aggressive bear species on a journalist named Sarah Williams. Sarah Williams, a 27-year-old journalist, is embarking on an exciting journey to the Indian countryside of Mysore. Her mission? To document the daily lives of the locals, gather information on their sources of income, and gain insights into their everyday experiences. Through her work, Sarah hopes to shed light on the unique living conditions of rural communities worldwide and broaden her understanding of diverse cultures. When she arrived in India, she was guided by another journalist from Mysore, named Anya, into the region's countryside. As they reached the area, Sarah was warmly greeted by Anya's family and her neighbors from when she was still living here during her college days. Everyone was pleased to have Sarah in their village and even accommodated her for her temporary stay here. After eating and chatting with the locals there, Sarah formally asked permission from Anya's father, Abhir, if they would allow her to document and take footage of the village's everyday life and interview them for necessary information needed for her documentation. Abhir cheerfully agreed and was even eager to share their life with Sarah. Sarah was accommodated into a cabin just within the village. The village was situated in a meadow beside a farm, partially surrounded by a forest. The scenery is very calm, and Sarah always gets to breathe fresh air whenever she decided to sit outside her cabin and talk to the children and teenagers about their school life. She wasn't used to this lifestyle, but she appreciated how calm and relaxing it would be when she was here. In the next couple of days, Sarah was toured by Anya's brothers into the place to help her with her documentation and share their everyday lives. They would sometimes tour Sarah into the forest beside the farm, or teach her how to make traditional Indian snacks, or speak some words from their local language. Sarah's first week in the countryside seems calming, but something, or someone, has been bugging her for days. Sometimes, in the middle of the night, Sarah would hear scratching and bumping sounds outside her wooden cabin. She might sometimes hear noises from the wooden door, which may sound like someone or something trying to open her cabin. She didn't dare to mention this concern to Anya or the other villagers, since she didn't want to blame anyone. However, there was one time when Sarah couldn't take it anymore, since she couldn't focus on reading a book late at night due to the noises. Sarah was quietly reading a book when she heard the noises again. The noises were frequent. She had gotten used to it and thought it was a wild animal trying to break into homes for food. But this time it's even louder and more forceful and disturbing her during her reading time. Sarah stood up from her bed and dropped her book angrily before heading to the door. She takes a deep breath before widely opening the door, letting the cool midnight breeze hit her instantly. Sarah was mad and nervous just by feeling how cold it was outside as she was waiting for something, such as an animal, to break into the cabin and attack her. Fortunately, there was no sign of a wild animal or a person outside. She even took a few steps forward to check what it was and saw nothing. She thought that perhaps it was because of her lack of sleep that she heard noises all night. Sarah decided to close the door and head to her bed to sleep after peeking outside. She just decided to continue reading her book the next day. When the next day came, the villagers took Sarah to a marketplace to teach her how to shop for ingredients using the basic local language. With this kind of activity, Sarah eventually forgets about her creepy encounter from last night. After a long day of discoveries about the lifestyle of the villagers, Sarah heads to her cabin to rest at night. She's been exhausted from all the documentation she did for the day, so she needs to sleep to prepare for her last day at the village tomorrow. However, she hears the strange noises again. Sarah tries to brush it off just like she used to, especially since she saw no wild animal last night when she went to check it out. As she tried tucking herself into bed, the noises became louder than last night which annoyed her more. Sarah madly stood up from her bed again and headed to the door, opening it in an instant. 
As soon as she opened the door, she expected nothing. However, this would be her biggest mistake. As she opened the door, she saw an adult sloth bear in front of the cabin, staring at her directly. Anya and the others had already told her about the sloth bear, but this was the first time she had seen one in person. The bear was huge for its kind and didn't look that friendly to Sarah. Sarah decided to close the door for her safety, but it was too late. The bear growled before charging towards her and tackling her down to the floor of the cabin. She screamed for the others to hear as the bear went on top of her, scratching her face and chest with its sharp claws. Sarah tried her best to defend herself by punching and pushing the bear away, but it was more evidence that the bear had twice her strength than hers. The bear continued to attack her by biting her head and shoulders and clawing her face, neck, and arms. Her chest was bloody due to the wounds when the bear scratched her face again, but her eye was scratched this time. Sarah cried out in excruciating pain as she tried to push the bear away with all the strength left in her body. As she was still getting attacked by the bear, Apir and Anya's three brothers finally arrived and entered the cabin to attack the bear with their bare hands. They beat up the bear easily until it decided to run away from the cabin, leaving Sarah severely wounded on the floor. They immediately took her to a hospital where she needed intensive care for her wounds and injuries. Doctors said one of her eyes won't function well for the rest of her life and needed surgery to avoid infection. But after all of the damage made to Sarah's body, she miraculously survived the deadly attack from the vicious sloth bear. Story 2 Another bear attack happened to a young corn farmer in Myanmar who was trying to check the situation of their crops. And just like the attack on Sarah Williams, it was done by another unusual yet aggressive bear species other than the grizzly and the polar bear. Tuya is a young corn farmer at the age of 19. He's from a family of corn farmers and it's also been their main source of income ever since. Aside from corn farming, Tuya has been very helpful to his parents in doing different errands so he can study at a university in the city. He dreams of becoming a veterinarian due to his love for animals. Tuya has three dogs named Tuza, Diva, and Vulcan. He loves his dogs so much and sometimes brings them to the farm whenever he's checking the situation of the crops. Tuya treats his dogs like his family and he doesn't even want to lose any of them. Unfortunately, the farm has been currently suffering from a poor harvest. Tuya and his father were disappointed since they've been working hard enough to take good care of their crops. One day, when Tuya was inspecting the crops, he noticed something strange. The crops indeed grew, but what was left of it was the corn cobs. Some of the corn he inspected were still intact, but it was obvious that someone or something had eaten the kernels. When Tuya told his father about what he had found, his father concluded that it may be the work of sun bears, since they are omnivores that sometimes target crops like corn. His father suggested they try to watch the crops and stay up all night to scare away the possible culprit that destroyed them. Tuya volunteered to watch the crops the whole night as he planned to bring all three of his dogs. He decided to watch the crops while sitting with his dogs under a huge tree just before him. Luckily, there were no bears that night, so Tuya concluded that the culprit had already given up on destroying their crops. A few days later, Tuya suddenly woke at night to hear one of his dogs barking outside. He immediately fell asleep again since he knew his dogs would always bark at what they saw at night. The next day, he heard that Vulcan was found lifeless near the corn crops. Tuya was heartbroken and began to cry while seeing Vulcan's lifeless body lying on the ground. His father and their neighbors felt sorry for him since Vulcan was his oldest dog and had been through a lot with him. Still devastated, Tuya buried Vulcan in an open space near the corn crops. After Vulcan's death, Tuya seldom worked on the farm and was often found grieving his dog's death. He tries his best to work and help his father, but can't stop thinking about what happened to his beloved pet. He strongly thinks that a wild animal, such as a sun bear that his father's been talking about, was the one who killed Vulcan. 
Just a week after Vulcan's death, Tuya's father found Diva lifeless, lying next to the corn crops like Vulcan did a week ago. Again, Tuya was heartbroken and blamed himself for not protecting his dogs enough. With this, he brings his remaining dog, Tuza, to everything, even when doing errands in the town or checking the crops. One day, Tuya unexpectedly found a sun bear devouring corn at the farm when he and Tuza arrived from an errand in town. Tuza began barking out of instinct upon seeing the animal, which intimidated the bear and made it stop eating the corn. The sun bear was just an inch bigger than Tuya, so he thought he could fight the bear with his bare hands. When the bear charged at him and tackled him to the ground, he realized he was wrong. The bear began to aggressively claw Tuya's chest, while Tuza was barking and trying to fight it by biting its foot. Tuya screamed for help as the bear scratched him everywhere on his body, causing him to bleed profusely. Tuya tried to fight the bear by pushing it away, which actually worked. However, the bear charged and went on top of him again when he got on his knees. Tuya once again struggled to fight the bear, as Tuza was just barking and attempting to bite the bear. The bear began to scratch Tuya's face, making him push the bear away and punch it. Tuya was fighting the bear even though he was now bleeding and wounded. A few minutes later, Tuya's father arrived along with their neighbors and chased the bear away, leaving Tuya unconscious on the ground. They immediately took him to the hospital. The doctor told them he needed intensive care after severe injuries and possibly surgery since one of his arms was badly hurt. After the attack, Tuya's father and other neighbors began searching for the bear. They even asked for help from the authorities to prevent another gruesome attack like this from happening. Story 3 Every day, Hotaru was very eager to go to his work. However, this is not just what everyone has expected, since he works as a handler of a bear born in captivity at a bear ranch in Hokkaido, Japan. Bonsai is an Asuri brown bear, born in captivity at the bear ranch where Hotaru works. The bear got his name due to his unusually smaller size than other brown bear cubs when he was born. Despite Bonsai's small size, he grew healthy with the help of Hotaru as his handler. The bear is now five years old and has become one of the main attractions at the bear ranch. He was visited by many people due to his smaller size, but Bonsai is still one big bear compared to Hotaru standing at almost 5.7 feet. Even though Bonsai may look tough and dangerous, he's very shy, yet interacts with Hotaru closely, especially during feeding time. Hotaru has trained Bonsai to be docile towards him, and even knows how to follow a few commands when rewarded with treats. For the past few years, Bonsai has gained popularity among locals and tourists due to his small adult size and friendliness towards Hotaru. Some journalists even went to the bear ranch to study Bonsai's body and how it got its small adult size. Luckily, Bonsai is one normal bear, and his small size makes him special. One day, while Hotaru was heading to the bear ranch, he got an unexpected call from the manager, shocking him. Bonsai had just escaped from his enclosure. After the call, Hotaru quickly rushed to the bear ranch to know the situation. The bear ranch was temporarily closed when he arrived, and the handlers were worried that Bonsai might go anywhere outside. The management of the bear ranch immediately called for help from the authorities to search for Bonsai, since he is a dangerous animal and may attack anyone on sight. Hotaru assures everyone that Bonsai is a shy and docile bear, However, the other handlers disagreed and told him that the animal was still a bear and could be unpredictably aggressive, if provoked. Still, Hotaro believes Bonsai won't be hard to catch and he might be back in the bear ranch without damaging anybody. The management of the bear ranch called it a day and sent all workers, including Hotaru, home after the announcement of Bonsai going missing and on the loose. The people in the surrounding area of the bear ranch were warned not to go outside in the meantime since Bonsai might be near them. Feeling devastated, Hotaru went home with a heavy heart. Bonsai might still be alive, 
but the thought of him going missing from the bear ranch has frustrated and disappointed him. He treats Bonsai like a child and doesn't want the bear to go through any trouble, even if it is a predatory animal like other bears. Ataru has been feeling down the past few days that Bonsai was missing. There were still no reports or sightings of Bonsai anywhere, making him more worried as time passed. Everyone was making their best effort to find the bear and take it back to the enclosure as soon as possible. A week after Bonsai went missing, there were news reports in the locality of Hokkaido of bear attacks and sightings which were said to be him. Otaru grows nervous whenever he hears a news report of a bear attacking someone since he knows Bonsai won't do such a thing due to his shyness. However, he knows that Bonsai is the only loose bear in their area. Otaru tries to cheer himself up as he works at the bear ranch and handles other bears. He openly shared his feelings with the other handlers, and they understood and tried to comfort him, assuring him that Bonsai would be back soon and he could see his beloved bear again. As he went home, he heard his mother watching the news on the television, and again, it was another bear sighting that speculated that it was Bonsai. The authorities were finding it hard to find him since he was faster than the other Usuri brown bears, considering that he is of a small size. However, the authorities won't stop searching until Bonsai returns home to the bear ranch. The next day, Otaro prepares himself for another day at work. He tries to keep a positive attitude, knowing that Bonsai might be around and authorities were looking for the bear. As he was walking past some huge trees in a residential area, he heard a rustling sound which made him stop. Otaru suddenly hears a huffing sound similar to what Bonsai makes alerting him. He knew the bear was just around and needed to know where Bonsai was. He slowly approaches the tree where he hears the sounds, and what's next will leave him in an unimaginable state. Bonsai suddenly steps out from the tree, confronting Hotaru. Hotaru was glad he finally found the bear, but it seemed like it was not the same Bonsai he used to be anymore. Bonsai was huffing and jaw-popping, slowly approaching the nervous Hotaru, who was trying to calm him down and make him recognize that he was his handler. Hotaru tries to calm the bear by telling it to sit down, but surprisingly, it won't work. Bonsai still approaches Hotaru with huffing and jaw-popping sounds, making him think that he became this hostile after escaping the enclosure. As soon as Hotaru tries to run away, Bonsai suddenly growls and charges, taking him down. Hotaru hurt his back in the process, as Bonsai went on top of him and began attacking him by repeatedly scratching his face and torso. Hotaru tried hard to fight back by pushing Bonsai away, but the bear was obviously strong, despite being at the same height as his handler. Hotaru screams for help as he tries to push the bear away and escape, but Bonsai is very aggressive and won't stop attacking him. The bear continued to bite and claw him everywhere on his body, from the head to the shoulders and arms. Blood was oozing down from Hotaru's arms as Bonsai bit them, making him cry. Suddenly, authorities arrived with tranquilizer guns, including the bear ranch's lethal restraint team. Not long after, Bonsai got shot with the tranquilizer darts five times, making the animal unconscious. The lethal restraint team carried Bonsai back to the bear ranch as Hotaru was taken to the hospital. Despite having lots of injuries to his back and wounds all over his body, Hotaru still managed to survive the attack from Bonsai. However, the management of the bear ranch had decided to euthanize Bonsai for good, since he had caused so much damage not just to Hotaru, but to the others he also attacked when he was still on the loose. It was a tough choice, but Hotaru accepted the decision of the management to euthanize Bonsai for the safety of other people. However, he was still hurting, not from the injuries, but from the fact that the animal he had helped raise since he was a cub had attacked him and was getting euthanized. Despite Bonsai's euthanization, the Bear Ranch promises to honor Bonsai for giving happiness to many people.